morning everybody today I'm going to be doing a portfolio for your roller coaster or excuse me a uh, tutorial for your roller coaster portfolio and hopefully we can make this uh, short and sweet but still something you understand so for this portfolio you're going to be turning in the um, lab report that is on the screen currently so the first thing it asks you to do is build a track, a roller coaster track for a tennis ball. Um, if you have at home like a connect set or if you have a marble run or something else that allows you to build a roller coaster track, by all means save yourself some time and use that. If you don't, I'm going to illustrate to you how to do one that's really quick and easy only instead of using a tennis ball we are going to use a marble okay simple desktop adventure if you want to make one with a tennis ball by all means go right ahead at the end I would like to have a picture of whatever track you use so get those smartphones ready and send me a picture okay we're gonna start here by um, just kind of showing you at my desk what it is that I'm gonna do to make this track. I'm gonna start by just drawing my hills on a piece of this is actually a folder and it works really well because when I cut this folder out or cut along this line here I will have um, two of the exact same pieces, right? If you don't have file folders, you can take a piece of poster board and fold it in half, or a piece of thin cardboard and fold it in half. So what you're going to end up with is two of the same pieces that you can put together <clears throat> front to back. When you're done with that, Okay, Oops. it's going to look something like this. Okay, you've got the front and back pieces. You can kind of see where I had cut down before. Now, you probably have some yep, lovely masking tape at home. I did not, so I used these name tags. And all I did was I made some, some little bridges that went between those two different file folders. So you can kind of see them right here. They are, um, you can see them real well, but they are cardboard bridges. Right here and right here. Okay, so those just connect the two pieces. And I made those all along the length of the roller coaster track. The more of those you make, the easier it's going to be. Then I connected the bridges with, in this case, my name tags, but again, you could use masking tape, which allowed me to get a um, a track that has three hills. Okay, it's got my starting hill, second hill, third hill. Okay. You should test it a few times because you may have to make adjustments. I had to make quite a few adjustments. So make sure that the marble is going to run from end to end. Oops, that time I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> okay. So you should be able to test it. It should be able to complete the track. If something's wrong, maybe um, you have some, you know, a, like a bumpy spot that it hits and slows down. Maybe it's too steep and it's not sliding down. It's actually just dropping. I had that problem before. So the next thing it's going to ask you to do is to measure the height metrically at the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill for each one of your um, different hills here. So I started off by measuring the height at the top of the hill. Make sure you have this the correct way. Okay. And I don't know if you can how well you can see this, but um, 
Let me get my hand out of the way in just a sec. Okay, you can kind of see here that my height looks like it's, oops, I have that, it's about five and a half inches, but I'm looking at centimeters, okay? So we want centimeters at seven centimeters, I'm about 16, about 16 centimeters. So that's just the height at the top of the first hill. Now, as far as I could see, nowhere in the lab sheet does it give you a space to record the height. So I would make sure you try to record the height, um, you know, maybe towards the bottom of each of the columns in your lab sheet or just somewhere, somewhere kind of off to the side. So the formula you're going to use is potential energy, gravitational potential energy, is equal to mass times gravity times height. Now, in this particular example, remember, we're not using a tennis ball, so the mass that's given in the lab is not going to be the same. This little marble is about 3 grams, and the height was about 16 centimeters. So we need to change grams to kilograms and centimeters to um, meters, grams to kilograms, centimeters to meters, okay? So grams, <clears throat> if I look at grams, there are one, one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So this is kind of my um, my conversion. Grams are going to cancel, and you basically end up with a three divided by a thousand. Three divided by a thousand just takes that decimal point and moves it one, two, three decimal places to the left. So this tells me it's 0 .003 kilograms. As far as the uh, <clears throat> centimeters goes, we have 16 centimeters. One meter has a thousand, or excuse me, a hundred centimeters. So centimeters are going to cancel. And my, that one, by the way, is just a placeholder. I'm going to take 16 divided by 1,000. By 100, I keep saying 1,000, and I mean 100. Okay. To make, move the decimal point two places to the left. So 16, there's the decimal points over there, even if you, you imagine it. 1, 2, 0.16 meters. <clears throat> so the potential energy for the top of this hill is equal to mass at 0 .003 kilograms times gravity at 9.81 meters per second per second times height at 0.16 meters. Okay? When you multiply these out, um, let's use the calculator to get there. Point zero zero three times nine point eight one times 0.16, which gives us a very small number of 0 0.005. <clears throat> and this should be joules. So let's make sure we get this these units correct, okay? So we have kilograms 
times meter per second squared times meters, which would give us kilogram meters per second squared times meter. Um, a kilogram meter per second squared, you might remember, is a newton. And a newton meter is the same thing as a joule. So this gives us the units of joules. Okay, just want to make sure we were doing the math correctly. So what you're going to be doing then is you're going to have to do the same thing for the bottom of that hill, the top of the next hill, the bottom of the following hill, the top of the third hill, and the end of the track to get the changes in potential energy. Okay, so you will have potential energy at the, um, where it is, and you'll have kinetic energy. Now remember, when you're at the very, very top of the first run, you are all kinetic and no potential, right? The very top of the first run gives you all, excuse me, let's strike that. I said that backwards. The top of the first run gives you all potential and no kinetic. So if you calculate your initial potential energy, then you know what the sum should be. The sum should be. Okay, so here, this first one should be zero. And we had just calculated that our potential energy here is 0 0.005 joules. That means our total is always going to be 0 0.005 joules. That was for my track, yours will be different. But I know that whatever I get here, I can just fill in all the way down. Keep that in mind. You need to answer the questions too. And I also want you to turn in as a separate file a photograph of your tract. Bonus yet, put yourself in the photograph of the tract. So you should be sending me this file and a lovely um, JPEG file with your picture. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Good luck everybody and have a pleasant day.